Well, there's nothing like making a grand entrance, is there? Welcome aboard. I'm flying the F-15E Strike Eagle at very low altitude down a valley, which is a heck of a lot of fun in DCS. The F-15E is a high-performance supersonic all-weather dual-roll fighter capable of carrying a huge amount of ordnance to strike positions deep inside enemy lines, day or night, and in all types of weather. So I'm using a uh, detent, that's the green one there you can see, which I configured specifically for the Strike Eagle. I've learned a lot since my initial video release just a few days ago, in which I demonstrated my new VKB Stex Max. You can see sitting right in front of there. Now, there were a number of things which I had uh, lamented over but I was willing to learn and adapt and make use of this great throttle. I you know, figured it's, nothing was really a showstopper for me. I can, uh, I can make it work. But uh, I had numerous viewers and readers on Reddit who contacted me to tell me that these issues could all be fixed using the software. I even had the developer of uh, VKB's configuration software reach out to me to help out. He sent me some uh, links to uh, pictures around how to uh, fix some of these so-called issues. <laughs> so since then, I've, I've uh, really come to appreciate uh, the software and all that it can do. And uh, I wanted to help out and uh, share some of that with you. Now let's get this thing rolling. All right, so I was going to uh, show how to set up the, um, the detents properly for both um, the afterburner as well as the um, idle and off. Um, so let's get started. So I swapped over to the, uh, the white uh, detent frame. I was using the black one. Black one is not really supposed to have any detents on it. I just liked the look of it. So... To be consistent, I'm going to stick with the white. So I've got my detents installed on it. Now I'm going to run the wizard. And it's very easy. So you pick which uh, shape. So I'm going to do that idle detent first. So that's the uh, the V shape. You can see it down there. And just click on the picture. All right, so you want to move it so that the, the throttle touches the detent. And my throttle's all the way down. So just click Next. Move it just past it, but not off of the detent, and hit finish. And that's it. So that detent is set. And um, so what I'm going to do is set the event. Before I do that, I'm just going to set this so that it uh, knows that it's, it's in existence. So that uh, flashes or updates the, doesn't flash, but updates the, uh, throttle so that it knows here's a detent. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is come here and create an event. And I want this one at the bottom where it's either below the detent or above it. That one greater than and then less than two. Okay. And then you just double click in here and you're going to see we're going to have four different. Uh, events because you have two below, one for each throttle, and two above. So these are the buttons that get assigned. So if you click on, just double click on there, it'll bring up this um, window to show which buttons are available. So I'm going to pick 89, 90, 91, 92. So you just pick the first one, and then everything else gets auto populated after that. Okay? So one thing you want to also do for this one is make sure you select Pulse. Otherwise, uh, it's just going to constantly be active. Here, actually, let's just show you what happens if you don't do that. Because I did this, and I was trying to figure out what was going wrong. Okay, so it's updated. So if we look at Test, 
you can see now I have my throttle below the detent in the off position and those two uh, buttons 89 and 90 are eliminated but when I push above now 91 and 92 are illuminated but if I move my throttle forward all the way up to you know past afterburner those 91 and 92 buttons are still being pressed that's not what we want so to correct that you need to come here and set pulse okay now it doesn't take effect until you um, set it in the um, firmware thing here see so it like it's still illuminating right so let's go back here so I've set it I want it pulse set which pushes it to the uh, throttle now if we come to test I'm gonna move it into off you'll see uh, uh, the buttons flash there. and now I'm going to push it forward 91 92 pull it back 89 90 91 92 so you see that it, it just pulses so now I can move my throttle back and forth without issue okay so that's my first uh, detent and then the next one uh, is going to be for my afterburner so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to Hit the wizard, uh, so select the type. So this is the afterburner one. So what that means is I guess there's the, 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 the large, larger face, uh, the, you know, the flatter, more vertical one is what you're going to hit first and then it eases off afterwards. Uh, if you wanted to set an L in the other direction for idle, I guess is how they have it phrased here. That's where you're pulling back and you'd hit that larger face and then as you Pull, continue to pull back it'll roll off I chose the uh, VD tent just my personal preference you can go either way I like the more of the resistance um, to push forward all right so we're gonna do that L afterburner and just click somewhere in here and we move that throttle forward and that's where it's just touching just resting up against it press next and I'm gonna move it forward but as you can see you don't move it right off just past that detent right there that is still on it and I'm going to hit finish and there we go so once again set it so that it updates the controller and now we need to set um, some buttons for this one as well uh, uh, an event Okay, so what kind of event do we want to do? Well, I want this to be equals equals so that it only triggers while it's on the detent. And and what I'm, what this is going to be activating are the finger lifts. All right, because there's some settings for the Hornet uh, where you can enable the detent and using uh, finger lifts. And I'll show you that later. So hit equal equal. Again, click in here. And it'll uh, assign buttons, and then you just double click that to bring up well what's available. And that's interesting that it's showing 91 and 92 available because they're already taken. So we'll go up to 96 and 97. All right, so we have 89, 90, 91, 92 there. 96, 97 for this one. And then we hit set. And I'm not going to pulse. I want that on while I'm on it. I, I tried pulse and it doesn't activate the finger lifts sufficiently. So just leave it. And that's why we're doing it only while we're on the detent. Uh, activate the, that those finger lifts. Hit set. Okay. So now, watch this. And I'm going to push forward and I'm on the detent here and now I'm off past it. Pulling back on and off back down towards off. And you got the little flash there. And that's it. The throttle is all set. Now the next thing we're going to have to configure 
is uh, setting this on the Hornet. And there's a few things you need to set in there. And I'll show you that coming up next. So there's one thing which I forgot to mention. Um, when we're setting the detents for that um, off and idle detent, detent number one down here, if you look, when I move my throttles down to where it should be at idle, it's actually registering as being at around uh, 4%, 4.4, right? And, and so that's going to mean that when you're in idle, your, your throttles are actually going to be, like in the Hornet, instead of sitting at 64%, they're probably going to be six, at 67 or 68, and you're going to be kind of rolling forward a bit. So to overcome that, we go to the detent one, which is down there, and we set the curve, we change it from off to zero. Okay, and that's going to allow us to uh, establish a, a, a setting of zero down here. This is what's sent to the uh, to the to the game. So we we'll just go ahead and set that. And you're going to see. Okay, we're at zero point three. So to address that, we move the position up a little bit. So let's try 4.3 and set. Okay, we're getting there. It's at 0 0.1, so I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit more from 4.3 to 4.4 and set. And look at that. Now when I move to uh, the throttle down to the idle spot, just resting against the detent, is sending a, a position of zero to the game. Now when I pull all the way down, it still doesn't matter. All it's doing is it's activating the uh, additional button for turning the engine off. All right, so here we are back into DCS. We need to set up the controls for the Hornet to match the throttle that I just configured. So make sure you're on the proper aircraft. On the, I'm configuring the F-18. And I want to go down to throttle quadrant. There we go. Okay, so. There we go right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be setting, um, first I'll set throttle left off. Okay. So you need to pull out the the um, coupler or the the, the switch that locks both, both throttles together because you're going to be configuring one at a time. So I'm going to set uh, throttle off. So I'm going to double click it and pull all the way back on the left throttle. And that button is not right. I must have pushed one on it. So let me just reset that and pull it again. There we go. 89. That's more like it. And now I'm going to set um, throttle idle on the left, so I'll double click this and push forward. 91, okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the right. Throttle off first, because I'm gonna pull it to the off position. So we'll set this, pull 90. And then throttle right idle, push forward, 92. Okay, so those all seem correct. Now the next thing we're going to do it, while we're here is let's set the uh, finger lift. All right. So I'm going to do the throttle um, lift on the left, the finger lift. So you see right there. So you can do both or you can just do the one. So I'm going to do the one on the left and I'm going to double click it. I'm just going to push up until I get to that afterburner detent and you're going to see. 96. Okay, pull that off. And then we want to do the same thing for the uh, throttle right finger lift. Right here. So I'm going to double click that and push the right throttle up to the afterburner detent. And there's that other button. There we go. So now we've got our idle and off for both 
left and right throttle uh, quadrants, and then the finger lift left and right. And so I'm going to hit OK, and that saves it. Okay, so there's one other thing you, you will need to do if you want to use this type of um, configuration with the uh, afterburner detent done the way I did. And so we need to go into settings and over go over to special. Choose your aircraft. And you need to set afterburner detent to always on. So you can have it always off, which is what I used to use when I was just, you know, physically moving it, like on my Warthog. Uh, I, I because there wasn't a uh, a detent button for going into afterburner. Only when you pulled the, the throttles all the way to the off position. So right away, this uh, the Stex here has a lot more um, buttons available you can uh, assign all these act actions. Anyway, you can also do it just so you're only on the carry, but I did it to always on. Okay. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we're good to go. And you're going to find that uh, the, uh, the throttle works quite well, just as it should. Hopefully this helped. On to the next thing. So as you can see, it was uh, pretty straightforward getting the uh, throttle detents set up, configured properly, and uh, working you know just perfectly for me. I'm uh, I couldn't be happier. I uh, really appreciate all of the help that uh, came forth from everybody who who kind of pointed me in the right direction. I really started with uh, a few people telling me, hey, you, you can actually, uh, you can fix this stuff. Um, some tried to uh, give me some pointers. Uh, I, I was having a look in the software and I was having sparks flying out of my ears, I guess, because I was having a hard time uh, tracking it down. But, um, you know, once uh, I started uh, really digging into it and also getting more help um, uh, from VKB themselves, um, a, a lot of this stuff became uh, pretty obvious and now I know there's there's a lot more to this uh, I can do a lot uh, of configurations to make uh, make this equipment do what I want so great job all right so one other thing that uh, I wanted to touch on was uh, something that I brought up in my previous video uh, if you saw it you'll know that or you may recall that I had lamented the fact that the flap switch, or what I was going to use as a flap switch, is only a two-position switch. Have a look at this. So, see there's nothing in the middle position. Move it up, we get 78. Move it down, we get 79. And that was it. Nothing in the middle. And for the Hornet, there are three positions for, this, for the flaps. There's auto, half, and full. And you need to be able to set those. So, I was just going to make do with either auto or full, since those are the main ones I use when... Um, I'm landing, and then the middle position I'd have to set in the game. So a number of people pointed out that, well, wait a sec, we think that you can actually set that. Um, some suggested you know, various options. And then also uh, Alex Oz, this guy right here, he chimed in and he said, well, yeah, you can, you can set that. And he offered me uh, some screenshots around how to do it. And uh, so I went in and uh, got it set. So I wanted to show you what I did. So let's go to profile and buttons. And what you need to do is turn on pull. Okay, so that's going to show you what physical buttons are being activated. This is the physical layout, I guess. Um, so here we have button 87 when it's up. And here we have button, uh, button 88 when it's down. So 87, 88. So let's remember that. Now let's go to Boolean and click on, I don't know, Frank Boolean's head here. And we're going to set this. So remember 87 was up. So let's come in here and put this up to 87.
and this was 88. Found that I have to actually use the arrows. I couldn't type it in last time. No big deal. Okay, so we have 87 and 88. Those are my physical switches up and down. So I'm going to do some uh, a function here. This is the uh, the magic, the uh, the Vulcan logic, right? We're going to do two or, and we're going to set up another physical button here, and we're going to say make sure that that INV is set, and we'll set that to the next available one. So let's double click this. Um, let's go with uh, 91, why not? Uh, 93, let's do 93. 93 is free, so let's set 93. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit OK here. And then we need to set it. So setting obviously pushes those configs into the throttle. Oh, look at this. So there's my up, middle, down. Isn't that great? 78, 70, uh, 93, and 79. I have my three position switch. How cool is that? You know, th that just kind of shows you the power of this software and how, how much you can configure. But wait, there's more. So... You notice how it's staying illuminated, right? So it's not pulsing, it's it's like you're holding that, that button down. So I uh, imposed upon Alex's time a little bit more and said, so is there a way to uh, have it pulse instead of being constantly pressed? To which he said, well, of course. <laughs> so he, uh, he showed me what to do with that as well. And I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna come to profile I'm gonna go back to buttons here. And you wanna make sure pull is set. So here it is in the up position, middle, and down. So let's start with the up. So we click on this. We're actually gonna change this from uh, buttons to encoder. No, sorry, generator. So instead of buttons, we're gonna to go to generator and it's going to pulse once. See that? And that's what we want. We can go ahead and close that. We're going to change our other one. This is our down. Same idea. Instead of buttons, we're going to go to generator. And that's it. And last one, the middle. Come here. Same idea. Change that to Generate, oops, generator. Let's push that configuration to the throttle. Always important to make sure you do that. If you, you just get into the habit of doing it, because if you don't, you're going to be scratching your head wondering, well, what's going on with this? Oops, I clicked it again. <laughs> just to make sure. All right, so let's have a look at test. Okay, I don't see anything pressed. This is uh, the uh, this selector thing here. Um, but let's focus on the flap. So when I flip up, 78. When I flip to middle, 93. And when I flip down, 79. Look at that. So my uh, wishes have been answered. Isn't that awesome? Uh, I tested this out in the game and it works like a charm. When I want to go flaps up, flaps up, or auto, half, full. Uh, I'm really very impressed with just how programmable this is. You can, this is just scratching the surface. There's all kinds of cool things you can do with this, stuff that I haven't dreamt up, but there are a couple people uh, mentioning, one, actually one guy, is, he said it's incredibly powerful, and he gave me some example of, of how he uses it and, and yeah, it, it, it's right. You can get this thing to do anything you want pretty much. I mean, all these various buttons and switches you can play with. 
the, the knobs, you can change what they do, add multiple effects, turn them on, turn them off, whatever. I'm really, uh, I'm really happy that I got actually the whole system here. Even, even this, I know before I said it might have been overkill, but uh, it actually is working really well. I think having these uh, levers and, and switches and stuff is going to make my, my time a lot more enjoyable. So hopefully this uh, helps you out. And uh, if you're running into you know, situations similar to what I had, uh, as you can see, all this stuff can be fixed just in the software. And they've been very receptive to suggestions, I guess. So if you have any questions or suggestions, um, you can usually submit it to them and they'll see about working it into their next, you know, whatever they're putting out. So hopefully that helps, and uh, let's move on to the next part. So with the uh, Max, I got four configurable detent frames. Those are those multiple colors you see there, plus the black one, which you cannot set anything on. Now, um, onto those, you'll set the physical detents. That's these uh, metal lugs you can see laid out in the tray, and you screw them on using the provided screws. So here I am. I'm going to actually create my detent for the F-15 Strike Eagle. And I chose the green one. And I have the two detents I want to use. I'm going to use the V-shaped one and the other one, what was it, an L-shape. So the V-shape I'm going to use uh, for my uh, cutoff. And the other one, I'm, I'm, which I'm attaching now, is going to be for the afterburner detent. So you just put it on. Make sure that the detent gets oriented properly. So I want the steep side facing towards the throttle. Like that, see? And just kind of slide it up to roughly where you want it. And um, just get it out of the way. And then we're going to do the cutoff one. Same idea. There you have it. They're in the rough positions that you want them. And you, once you put them into the throttle um, and screw it on, you can adjust the positions, kind of fine tune them to where you want and take it from there. So if we have a look in uh, VKB software, you're going to notice that when I move my throttle up to the uh, detent stop for afterburner, uh, at the bottom, it's registering between 64 and 65. So when I just want full mill power, it's going to be already uh, staging into afterburner. And that's what I don't want to have happen. So you need to uh, make use of the curve. So you come over here uh, to where the, um, the detent is. So this is detent number two, right? And you're going to move that red line by setting the curve. So you just uh, click into there, and you can type in. So I went to 63. So I want the stop to be at 63%. All right, so that's set. Now we have to go and set it into um, the throttle that uh, pushes the config onto it. So now you'll see when I push my throttle up to the detent, it's going to be just almost at 63. And so now when I push forward and it rolls over the detent, it's going to uh, eventually hit 64, and that's when it stages into afterburner all the way up to 100% max power. So this is very handy. If you didn't, uh, you know, if that physical detent location isn't precisely where it has to be, you don't have to sit there and constantly adjust it. You can just come in here and play around with the curve, and it'll solve that, you know, the problem that you're having. Uh, this was a super uh, smart little thing to do, and uh, once again, great appreciation for um, what they've done with the configuration for uh, this throttle. It's a great job. All right, let's uh, get the uh, throttle idle and cutoff set up for the F-15E Strike Eagle. So we're going to come into settings, make sure you're on the correct aircraft, go down to... Throttle quadrant, select it, and now we're looking for the uh, throttle left off. 
because we're going to do this one at a time. So make sure you pop out that uh, clip that keeps them together. And we're going to pull, uh, double click in there and pull back. And you're going to see it'll set that button. Now we're going to push the left one forward and set the idle. Push that forward. And we're going to repeat this for the right throttle as well. Pull it back for off. Okay. And then we're going to push forward to idle. Okay. Look at that. We're all done. That was super easy, wasn't it? There's actually one other thing I wanted to demonstrate, and that was for setting uh, the uh, afterburner detent on the F-15 Strike Eagle. Um, you'll, you'll see that when you go into the settings and special and select the F-15E, there's an option for the um, afterburner detent. So it, the real world one, if you hover over that button, it says it is 64. So you can you know, use that. The cutoff detent doesn't really do anything if you have the, uh, the cutoff value set. But, um, so I just focus on that afterburner one. So I left at 64. Uh, so when your throttle is at 64%, it's gonna start the, the afterburner. You wanna make sure that you get that set properly in software. All right, so the last thing I wanted to demonstrate was how easy it is to swap between those um, detents from one frame to another. So you see in here, I have the green one in. Uh, you press and hold the button and you switch it around until the color of the other detent that you want pops up. So in this case, I'm gonna switch to white. And there we go. It is now configured with the, the detent settings for the white one. Now I wanna go back to green, hold the button, rotate, let go, and it will once again update the throttle. So you, you don't even have to get back into the software for that. You just you can you can unscrew and change that detent out, which is super easy. There's a little uh, thumb screw that holds it in place. Just rotate that, take it out, and then slide out that frame. Okay. Put that there. Now let's put the white one in, which is the one I'm using for the Hornet. Because I think I like to go for a flight in the Hornet next. So get that seated in properly. Kind of wiggle it in there, make sure it's in. And then uh, tighten in that thumb screw to hold it in place. All right, that's all in there. Now we need to switch to the proper detent profile. So hold the button. Nope. Hold that button down and rotate until you see white. There it is. Let go. And now it's going to update the throttle with the proper settings. And then we're good to go. Super easy. Makes life a lot easier. Uh, definitely s switching around with these uh, detents and the detent profiles is a huge, uh, huge time saver and lets you really get all kinds of nice customizations uh, for different aircraft. All right, some of these aircraft you're not going to need necessarily an afterburner. Like let's say we're in the A-10 or the Apache. We're going to use this as a uh, collective. And so you just need to um, put in a detent that works, that has settings for it, uh, that work for you. Once again, to switch back, we're gonna go back to the green because maybe I'll fly the Strike Eagle again. Screw it in tight. And let's not forget to set it to the proper profile. Hold the button down. There's the green, let go. And it updates the throttle just like that. Super easy. All right, let's finish off uh, hopping back in the aircraft and let's get this thing set. So I want to show you now with the uh, setting, when I move the throttle forward, it actually moves it out of the park position because we don't have uh, to worry about, um, you know, having only one button set, right? We have one for idle and one for um, off. And then we can push forward into afterburner and it goes all the way up. It works super nicely. Yeah and into afterburner. So let's pull it all the way back to off and let's get things rolling. Rainy day here on the carrier deck. Let's close that canopy. Man, point control can be a little finicky at times. <laughs> 
Alright, there we go. That's better. Okay, crank the right engine. Let's start getting things ready for takeoff. Turn on all the MFDs, the HUD, radar altimeter. Set the center display brightness. Turn on my helmet mounted sight. Once we get up to, yeah, we're ready. We can move that throttle forward. Now watch this. Boom. Let that one come up to speed and continue getting the aircraft ready. Left engine crank, turn on the oxygen. Roll left, roll left. Flight controls. Flight controls. All right. So one thing that I did, let me just push this up, get that on, and let's engage that lock. Right on. So one of the things you got to do for uh, startup is you need to do a flap test. So I actually set that red button on that uh, front panel. I'm going to hold that down and then press the flight control uh, test. And off we go. Look at that. Before I used to use voice attack, I would hold the uh, MFD button, but then I had to say uh, flap test. I don't have to do that anymore because I got all these uh, extra buttons. How nice is that? I do try to do most of the stuff that I can one-to-one uh, -one in the cockpit, but sometimes you can't. Now, the other thing was I set the flaps in that um, front thing to work. So look, it goes middle, up, middle, down. Works like a charm. I also have uh, the landing gear set for that upper switch. I also use the uh, radio, and they work pretty well. I'm still learning the position. You see I can push it in, and it turns on the radio, rotate through the different channels. It moves really nicely, nice and fast. Now I just have to teach my brain to actually use that. I also use the, uh, the buttons at the bottom to turn my exterior lights on and off. So the bottom button will turn them off. There. And then the top button turns them on. There we go. Again, just find different uses for all this stuff based on what you want to do. All right, GPS is aligned. I think we're almost ready to go. Radar artillery, army ejection seat, tighten the straps. And let's get those wheel chocks removed, shall we? I think I'll uh, taxi over to Catapult 4 this time. Remove wheel chocks. Chief, remove the wheel chocks. Copy. Two wheel chocks are now removed. Waypoint 1 at 1,900. Alright, throttle up, let's move forward. Taxi over to Catapult 4. That E2C should uh, shoot off of it by the time we get there. Those poor guys standing out in the rain, right? So while we get lined up here, um, hopefully you found everything uh, helpful in this video. I know it's it's it was more of a how-to video. Um, I wanted to really follow up with my last one. Um, 
because there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know. I mean, I'd been playing around with the throttle for a while, for a few days, but uh, this is the first time I've used the VKB software and really didn't understand, you know, anything about how it all works. And I'm, I know there's going to be a lot of other folks like that, so I'm hoping that these videos uh, help out with stuff like that, right? Uh, it kind of shows you just how powerful the software is and how great it is to have a highly configurable throttle uh, like the the stacks uh, it, it just uh, you know makes life easier now I, I'm, I'm really happy that I got this I'm happy I got all the stuff that I, I did uh, it's gonna work well for me the way I play DCS um, and again the price was right I really thought that I, I liked the pricing there's a few little you know annoyances of the design decisions that were made for this but it's it's for me none of it was really a deal breaker it's just really you know i just have to retrain my brain with some of the stuff um which you'd have to do anyway uh, but some of it just takes a little bit extra effort like that uh, mini stick or throttle designator controller being under the thumb not a fan of that but um well it's it's there so i'm not going to uh cry about it anymore all right, let's wipe uh, out the controls, give a salute, push into afterburner, and let's get this thing off the deck. Get my hands ready on those switches for the flaps and landing gear. Clearing turn, raise the flaps, raise landing gear. Yeah, they're coming up. Everything's good. Well, once again, thanks for your time. I hope this all helped you, and uh, go have some fun. If you have one of these uh, throttles, man, there's not there's not a whole lot that you can't do with it. I'll see you later. So that's it for the video. I'm just going to buzz around in the clouds a bit and uh, catch up to that E2C. Uh, free to stick around if you like. It's always fun to see some flying, right? Have fun. Thank you. 